if you, like me, have been on any small to medium sized sets, this is going to be a pretty common sight to you. Now, the surveillance headset and Motorola combo has basically been used for years now at this point on sets. One thing I've been seeing a bit recently on mid-sized productions is that camera departments are actually switching over to headsets. And the main reason is so that when the operator is operating, they can still keep this down and keep themselves keyed in, which basically means that they can still talk hands-free. Hey guys, I'm Jacob, a camera assistant and cinematographer out of Austin, Texas. Now the era of the surveillance headset radio combo might be coming to an end for certain departments. It's pretty interesting. I'm actually finding that mid-sized productions will actually use a combination of headsets for camera department and basically standard comms with surveillance headsets for almost everybody else. Now, obviously this isn't going to be every set. I've only seen it on a handful so far, but it is definitely increasing in popularity as time goes on. That being said though, being able to be keyed in by just having this down is a huge, huge bonus. So let's talk more about it. But before we do, if you have time and enjoy the video, a like is as always very much appreciated. If you wanna see more like this, a subscription is also very much appreciated. But if not, that dislike button works extra well if you hit it twice. Before we move on, a quick shout out to Hollyland who actually sent out the original four headsets. Uh, I actually ended up liking it so much that I bought two additional headsets uh, and then one of which is the actual pro model. Now let's talk about the overall build quality. Having come from Eartex on quite a few jobs, uh, I have to say that I very much enjoy this build quality as it really doesn't squeak, it's pretty solid, and overall I really just enjoy the design and look. So I found that even after wearing these for 12 plus hours, I haven't found these to be overly bulky, overly heavy, and at the end of the day my head isn't left hurting. So. I don't know if that necessarily says that it's gonna work perfectly for you, but for me in particular, they are a great size with quite a bit of adjustment, uh, depending on different head sizes, and has nice faux leather padding inside that I really haven't found to be too hot, even in the Texas sun, so far. I've also found the headband to be pretty comfortable as it has a little bit of padding on it and I really haven't had any complaints comfort wise. Now they also do come with little mesh ear pads that you can put on instead of the faux leather ear cups. These are primarily what you'd find on things like the Eartex. I just find that the leather has a little bit more of a premium feel and is something I personally prefer having on my ears for 12 hours a day. But the mesh really isn't bad either and the mesh is something that you can replace much more easily. So if you're maybe gonna be in a really extreme environment or very hot environment, uh, you might wanna put this on just so you can replace them without much fuss. Now a problem I've seen on quite a few ear techs is over time the microphone will start to just drop down and start keying at random times so I haven't yet found this to be an issue with the solid comms but it is something to possibly watch out for. I've been using these for about six months and you know they're still still very tight and will hold their position any which way and it really hasn't loosened so far but again this is something to kind of watch over time and you know if it starts to happen and I can't figure out a way to tighten it up I will leave a comment down below to let you guys know what's going on. They also have a nice little indicator light letting you know that they are connected up and everything is working properly. Another feature of the design that I really like is that these actually have an on off switch. The fact that they have an on off switch means that crew is more likely to turn them off during meals, which basically means saved battery. Which kind of brings me to the next point, battery life. Now the system actually works off of a master remote setup, which basically means you have a bunch of remote headsets that operate off of one master headset. So that means the master headset has to be on and in range for all the other remote headsets to actually connect or you can use a base station which acts kind of as a master that you can put a gold mount battery on, V mount or NPF batteries and then that can just go and live on a cart somewhere. I personally find that I prefer the master headset over something like a base station because again it's just another headset that I have to put a battery in and then let somebody go out in the field with versus the base station is something I have to be a little more cognizant of and put a battery on. The only downside to this is that the master headset only gets about four to six hours of battery life so that means potentially either one or two battery changes during the day which isn't ideal but it's not actually as jarring as you'd think as long as say you have a PA around that can just run you a battery or you can just keep it with you and then you're pretty much golden. 
Luckily, unlike the Eartex, these actually use a voice to announce like low battery or, or disconnected or whatever, so that you actually know what the issue is. If you've ever used the Eartex, you'll know that it uses a cryptic beeping system where nobody ever really knows what the beeps mean. So these will at least tell you what is going on. The good thing also is Hollyland ships two batteries per headset, so you can pretty easily get through a day without charging anything. They actually include an eight bay charger, which again is very nice. So that means all of your batteries are basically accounted for here. You'll empty out one side, load up all the headsets, and then the other side you can leave charging and then just swap them whenever you're ready to switch. And then you can basically run them forever because the batteries only take two and a half hours to fully charge. So as touched on earlier, using the master headset, you can actually connect up to seven remote headsets, meaning it'll give you a team of eight headsets that you can work with. If you have the base station, you can also have two different groups going at the same time. As far as the range goes, you're looking at about 1100 feet or 350 meters, which I find is usually decent. There was one point in a stadium where we were using them where they actually kind of got significantly less, but again, we were going through concrete and metal. So that's pretty much to be expected. Now this was a small, medium sized stadium. So if you're really in a large stadium, I don't think that they're gonna work super well for you. But again, for a smaller space or most other sets I've been on, this has not been an issue at all. The signal these use is a digital encrypted signal, a DEC 6.0 signal, which basically means that you're not going to end up picking up random RF or pick up from different walkie channels. These are gonna be on their own frequency, which I really haven't had an issue with them interfering or having interference from anything. Being digital and using the DEC 6.0 protocol also means that you're not going to actually end up keying with somebody else and, and causing like a, a muddled sound that you would have on older comm systems. So, you know, two people can have theirs down at the same time and talk and you'll still be able to hear both people. Obviously, it's like in a normal conversation where if two people are talking, sometimes it's hard to hear, but at least you're not going to have a limitation of the system. Now, comparing the Hollyland C1 Pro versus the standard C1, you'll actually find not too many differences, but a few quite notable ones. I would say the biggest difference between the C1 and the C1 Pros are the inclusion of an ENC switch on the back of the microphone. Now, this is going to be a noise cancellation system for the microphone, which means that if you're in a noisy environment, the C1 Pro might be the way to go. So that means you're gonna pick up quite a bit less of the environmental noise. It's gonna be pretty helpful for things like wind noise, AC, just overall static noises that you kind of hear in your environment. Obviously, if somebody is like right next to you and talking pretty loudly, it's not really gonna help a ton with that, but things that are kind of patterns in the background, it should do a pretty good job of filtering out. Now, this feature is actually the reason why I picked up one headset of the C1 Pros, so that if there is a camera operator in a somewhat noisy environment or an environment that has like a lot of wind noise, I can go ahead and give them this headset in particular, so that'll kind of filter out the noise for the rest of the people on these headsets. So another feature that they added is actually a push to talk. So you can go ahead and have your microphone always down and then just go ahead and push it. And basically now I'm muted until I push the button again and now I'm live once more. Now, obviously the arm going up still mutes me. So that feature has stuck around luckily. Uh, this is just kind of another option if you wanna do something a little bit different. So I think my first con with the C1 Pro has to do with the volume button sides. So you'll actually find that on the C1 Pro specifically, they have actually gotten rid of the larger plus button. So now you kind of have to like look at it and see which one is the plus and minus. I find with the center button, it's not too difficult. It's just something I wish they had kept so that there was a little bit more of a distinction when you're not looking at it and when it's on your head and you're just trying to turn down the volume really quickly. Now going to the cons of the unit as a whole on both the Pro and the standard C1, the volume buttons are actually behind this arm. So if you pop on this headset and the volume is turned up way too high, all of a sudden you have to like tear this back and then try and like turn down the volume really fast. So that is something that I wish they had just switched the A and B buttons around with because I really don't find myself using the A and B buttons almost ever. And so if they had just put the volume buttons where the A and B buttons are, that would have been something that personally I would have used a lot more. Another improvement I'd like to see in the future is actually a longer range version. Version. Um, I find that these have really good sound quality and I much enjoy using these over something like a standard Motorola walkie-talkie. However, 
the range does leave a lot to be desired, which means if you walk even slightly offset, you'll oftentimes lose connection, which is not great if somebody has to go out to like the grip truck or the camera van or whatever, and you can no longer communicate with them except through a cell phone. So the 1100 foot range does definitely hinder a little bit, but is more of just a minor annoyance rather than a total deal breaker. Another point of improvement that I would really like to see is possibly the use of bigger batteries, just something to get the master through more than four to six hours of the day. So basically with the master, the more remote headsets you have hooked up to it, the less the battery life is going to be. And so if you have the max of seven remote headsets hooked up to it, you're actually, you're gonna end up getting close to four hours in the day. 12 would be the ideal because a lot of times set ends up lasting about 12 hours. And the less you have to think about overall is always a major improvement. Now I definitely understand that these batteries are nice and small and they're trying to keep them nice and small with a decent amount of range. So I understand the engineering constraints but just coming from a point of usability, it is something that I wish was improved overall. Now briefly rolling over why I like these so much. They're very comfortable. I love being able to just have this down and have it be keyed open so that I can just talk whenever I want and I don't have to keep pressing a button to talk. And it allows operators who are actively operating a camera to continue to speak and talk. Now obviously that's not gonna be feasible in every shot, especially shots where you're close to the actors, but especially on long shots where you're a little bit farther away, a little bit disconnected, it's great for the DP to be able to stay at Village and just give active instructions instructions to the operator so that they can continue to work and have an active back and forth going on. I also really appreciate the fact that these announce what's going on, whether something's disconnected, has a low battery, and on the Pro specifically, I really like that they included an ENC feature now so that you can kind of cut down on wind noise. Overall, I would really recommend these for camera teams or even smaller g and &E teams. I think they're a great product and they sound fantastic and is obviously something I liked so much that I bought two more headsets. This is easily something that really helps communication on set, and I've heard nothing but good things from people I've had use them over the last six months. With that, if you have any questions, let me know down below or hit me up on Instagram as I'm more likely to respond quickly there. As always, I hope you learned something or at least saw something cool, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.